idea that came to them in an emergency drill conducted at the number five reactor last in November. This is a video and training conducted based on the fact that the cooling function have been compromised. But this time around, it wasn't one reactor, but all six that lost power. Four also lost their emergency backup power, something the plant's operators never thought could happen. Yuichi Shimada, a professor at the Tokyo Institute of Technology, says nobody had ever expected problems on this scale. He says he can't imagine how to go about dealing with them, and he says the people at the plant will also have been baffled as to what should be done. In today's plan, work is divided into three tasks. One, to restore cables at number one and number two reactors. Another, at the number three and four reactors and repairs to the power system at number five and six reactors. For the number three, four, five and six reactors, workers plan to use cables originally installed to send out power generated at the plant. The plan is to use it as a power source by drawing electricity from outside sources. The utility company is rushing to first finish restoration of the power system at the number two reactor. Why does the company give higher precedence to the number two reactor, although its building has hardly been damaged? The nuclear and industry safety agency official says it's because the building is undamaged, it's difficult to put water into it from outside. He says it's necessary to restore the cooling system by repairing the power system. About 20 people are working on the number two reactor. Electricity from outside power sources reaches the reserve transformer on the ground. A power cable is to be laid over a distance of 1.5 kilometers to reach a temporary transformer near the reactor building. Workers plan to lay the cable through the buildings of the number one and three reactors to connect it to another transformer in the number two reactor. This way, they plan to send electric power to all six reactors. Restoration work at the damaged plant faces a number of problems. The biggest issue is how to shield workers from radiation. Radiation of 10 millisieverts per hour has been observed near the number one reactor and 15 millisieverts per hour near the number two reactor. This Tokyo Electric Power Company official says the operation must be carried out based on levels of radiation observed in place. Workers involved are required to put on protective gear. The maximum tolerable amount of radiation each worker is to be exposed to during one stint is set at 100 millisieverts. It's hard work carried out in the dark in a race against time. The restoration of power does not resolve the whole problem. Most of the motors and switchboards at the plant have been submerged by the tsunami and they cannot be used. Thorough examination must be carried out to determine whether there is a leakage of electricity and whether some machines and switchboards remain usable. If there are problems, work is necessary to replace unusable motors with new ones and rearrange the joints of the switchboards. Tokyo Electric Power Company says some of its workers at the power plant in Fukushima have been exposed to radiation of more than 100 millisieverts. That's the figure the company had set as the limit for workers in an emergency. TEPCO disclosed the information early on Saturday. The company says this is its first ever crisis, so it has decided to raise the limit to 150 millisieverts. It says it won't send any worker back to the reactors after exposure to more than 100 millisieverts of radiation.